Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. I'm back at the middle fork of the Feather River. I came here and fished for Patreon a few weeks ago, and it was really rushing, and the water was stained. It looked like iced tea. Kind of looks like iced tea now, too. But I don't know. It's, 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 it's a much lower, and it's barely going. So I'm just going to start with my fly rod, see what that looks like, and then I'm going to go from there. I just got a little beadhead nymph on there. And I'm just going to go throw this thing, see if see what it's like. And then once I assess that, I'll decide whether or not I want to try something else. I don't know what mineral or what, what makes the water look like iced tea here. <laughs> it's kind of gross. <laughs> but it's clear, so the fish can see what I got. It's got a little bead head on there. On a jig, got things going a little faster. And he nailed that thing. I threw a woolly bugger out there and they just weren't interested, man. So I threw this uh, marabou jig on and second cast. He nailed it. Ugh. There we go. Nice little brown. It's something, <laughs> but I know there's bigger fish than that in here. I'm gonna go down and fish some better rushing water. This is really low. Last time it was flowing, that gravel bar wasn't exposed. And I, was, I, I got one hit on my fly rod on my nymph and that was it. And I'm just not feeling a lot of patience today. So I'm just gonna be switching a lot and trying a lot of different things. This is the first place I could walk up and fish and not have to deal with crawling. <laughs> That's why I was using my jig because I could cast from so far away. But in this deep pool, I can just uh, let that thing get down there and strip it. my fly rod, put on a woolly bugger in this big pool, ran it down deep, and he nailed it. I'm fishing straight barbless, so I hope I don't lose him. But you know, you land some, you lose some. What do we got here? This is the best pool I've seen so far. It's a nice rainbow. There he is. Ah, got him. There we go. Nice little rainbow. I'll take it. Yoo hoo! There, ah, there he goes. He shot. Uh, he shot the wrong direction. I don't know what makes the water this iced tea color. It looked like this last time, and something pours in it somewhere along the way that makes it this weird. Like if if you put this a glass of ice with some lemon, it would look like a glass of iced tea. That's why I say it. So, and it, downstream there's some feeder creeks and they're crystal clear that flow in. So that's not the issue. So, who knows, man? It's just kind of weird. Came down here, got one right off the bat. I don't have a lot of back casting room, so. I have to, uh, I, my leader's really short. I gotta get down here and get this guy. Uh, and it's another rainbow. Is that a nice rainbow? Take that guy, huh? Get him back out there. Still using that black beadhead woolly bugger. But I think they're onto my, they're onto my routine. This will be the final stop for me on this morning of fishing. And there's a bridge that crosses the river and there's some decent pools around. I'm just gonna throw my jig because I'm feeling really lazy right now. <laughs> and, we're gonna, and we're gonna see how that works out. But I want to see what these pools look like up here before I fish the bridge. Or maybe I'll do the bridge first in case somebody shows up. 
some really nice rainbows just cruising under that bridge. I, they didn't want my jig. I didn't have my fly rod. They were rising a little bit. I'm thinking about I might have to go get my fly rod and go back there. I don't know. I was getting ready to leave, man. And I cast it up towards the head of that pool. And I saw a big fish take a shot at my jig. I threw it a couple more times. He wouldn't go. So I think I'm going to go hike upstream. They're doing prescribed burns, so there's a lot of smoke. But I'm going to go walk upstream, see what's going on, give that fish time to relax and forget about me. And I'm going to try to come back and take another shot at it. It's a good, it was a good enough fish or I need to try it again. I'm going to, even if it, even if I have to give it an hour or two. His family was just <laughs> kayaking down and this guy had his kid in the front of the kayak and they capsized and I was like in the perfect spot to grab the kid's life jacket, pull him out and then help him get their kayak out. I mean, it wasn't like a life threatening situation, but the kid was not happy. I'm in this slow water and I threw my jig out. I just had a really nice trout follow it. He just wouldn't hit it. I mean, he was right behind it. He just wouldn't hit it. This water's really slow, but there's trout out there. And I'm thinking I need to go back and get my fly rod is what I'm thinking. I don't know. I don't know what to do. My jig, so I threw this bead head on and this fish is hitting it. I just can't set the hook, man. And it's it's fast and the, and the bobber just hit me in the face. <laughs> and, and I don't know how many more chances this thing's gonna give me. But he's hitting it really hard. Like he's taking it down. And it's a big, it's a big bead head. And this is the best I got. My car's like a half mile away. And my fly rod's in my car. Oh. All right. I'm just gonna keep at this. Got a real nice looking rainbow. There's some beautiful fish in this river, man. And this is why I brought my long handle net. <laughs> Let's take this guy over here. And this is a really nice piece of stream. Look at him, you can see that big red stripe. And these fish, whoa, whoa. These fish are really wild. Got him. I've let him chill in the net. And I'm gonna have to just kinda get him over this stuff because I don't know my waders on. I got my hands wet. Look at this big rainbow hit that jig. Middle fork, Feather River. Look at that beautiful red stripe and gill plate. Let's get him back in the water. Down here, the, the water's crystal clear. There's no more of that iced tea. And I saw him swim right up and just crank that thing right in the middle of the river. He was on the far bank feeding. And that's why I bring my big net, man. <laughs> If you could float down this thing, you could probably get yourself some serious fish. But I'm gonna fish a little bit more here, and then I'm gonna go back and try to catch that giant one. The only reason I'm down here is because back by the bridge where the water's spilling in, I saw a fish bigger than that try to hit my jig, and I'm trying to give him time to relax and forget about me. But again, the key here is accuracy. You just gotta be accurate. God, it was amazing how many fish I saw follow my jig in, in this little stretch. A lot of them were only like 10, 12 inches, but that big guy, he, no doubt about it, he, was, he wanted a meal. <laughs> and he, he went for that big meal. Really, really nice rainbows in here, man. I just walked into the water and there was one city there, he just, he just swam off on me. And then I tried to throw my jig, and this is not jig water right here, but I can see a couple risers. It's just, this is gonna be hard to fish if you're fly fishing. It's hard to fish with anything, really. Another one, this is a good one. And he's all wrapped up in this bush. 
Oh, get him out of that bush. He's out of the bush. He's out of the bush. Let me get my net. He cranked that jig though, boy. He cranked it. He's all fired up. The jigs already fell out. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go. There he is. He's got blemishes. Something tried to eat this guy is what that is. Cause these are wild fish, man. They're beautiful. Back in there, buddy. What happened here is I did that thing where I try to cast upstream and then use the current to get clear of the bushes. But my rod wasn't big enough and it got caught on the top, but that fish hit it and pulled my line free. And then when it swam back up the river, it, it got tangled in the bush again. But hey, I don't care. This is turning out to be a really good day on the river, man. So this is the fish that kept me here. I was going to leave. I cast it on that side and saw a big flash. It had to be like 18, 20 inches, man. And if that fish didn't do that, I wouldn't have got that big rainbow up there. I wouldn't have got that, uh, that second one just up in that white water above. And I would have just had a mediocre day. But let's make this, it all comes down to this cast. Right where it needs to be. Come on, buddy. You're there. No dice. I knew he wasn't going to take it. I stayed here all day just to get that second cast in. So what a fantastic day on the middle fork of the feather. And <laughs> I didn't land that big trout but it kept me here for a couple more hours. And I, the only reason I went up the stream to fish for longer was because I wanted to get another shot at that fish and it didn't even bite anyway. But I went up there and found more stream. There's tons of good water and there's a lot of wild rainbows, man. And, and the fish that missed my jig, I saw the thing come up and try to hit it. I mean, it was a big trout. But that one I got was awesome. And these rainbows all have those pink fins and they're all wild. And when I first started, I was just kind of grumpy and tired. Had a long day yesterday at work. Got up at four in the morning so I get out here early even though I caught all my fish in the middle of the day. And I just, I crawled under this bridge like a troll and went to sleep for a while and the cars were driving over it and I'm just who's that driving over my bridge and then you know once I powered back up the reason I came back down with my fly rod is I saw a nice fish that was like probably 14 15 inches swim by like three times when I was standing or throwing my jig earlier and the water's really slow but now that I got my fly rod, I sat here for a while and I haven't seen him come by again. And I'm still looking. I'm still looking to see. Because if he comes by, I'm going to be like, ah, ah, because I got a bead head on here. So when I was doing my fly rod, I shortened my leader down to about six feet. And that's what I got those rainbows on. Because that just gives me better control. The water wasn't that big where I was fishing in that section where I hit that fish on my fly rod. And then when I fish in that other deeper section, I just let that woolly bugger sink down, gave it a couple tugs, and that rainbow just nailed it. But it's really hard to sneak up. Like right here, the river is really big and it's deep, and there's fish rising out there. But up where I was fishing that other section, it's a tough going for jigs, eighth ounce jigs. I was I was coming up with moss. The water's only like this deep. So you gotta skip it really fast. And that's why I was fishing cross current because that gives you a couple more seconds. And cause if you cast upstream when it's really shallow like that, then the jig just, it's on the bottom too fast. And, and once you get that green stuff on, I keep looking to see if that fish is swimming by, <laughs> sorry. But if you get that green stuff on your, on your line, nothing's gonna bite it. And this was another day where that clip where I said accuracy is key. I was soft tossing my jig to the other side and I was dropping it right at the edge of the grass on the far bank. 
because that's where the fish were. And then when I was walking out, I walked up to the water and saw a nice trout, like 14 inch just swim away from the bank. So don't overlook that, that stuff where it's slow if you got your fly rod. Because if I had my fly rod, I could have just walked up and roll casted it right out there and probably could have caught that fish. But, you know, you never know. Sometimes they just don't bite. But it was a great day. Once I had a nap, I ate a bagel, got all powered up, saw that big fish, got my adrenaline going, got up the river, next thing you know, and I almost put my big net in the car because I wasn't really catching anything big. I will never leave my big net again coming to the middle fork of the feather after what I saw today. I saw some things, some things that changed me. I'm probably gonna come back out here in the winter because this is now under general regulations and general regulations is covered under section 5.85 where you can fish year round barbless, catch and release zero bag. And uh, as long as that sticks up after December, I'm gonna come out here when it's really cold. And that's when I like to fish, when it's bone chilling cold. Thank you for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. Until next time.